Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovac. Today we're going to talk about practicing long distances so that you're good close in. Uh, and also talking about the obstacles and stuff like that that mess with your depth perception and your, your mental aspect of yardage judgment. So here's about the farthest I can get on this deck to this place out here. I have that bag target out there. It's actually 32 yards to where I'm standing at here. I can get to 35 if I go to the back of the deck, uh, but then you can't see it very well with the camera angle. So we're here 32 yards uh, to that bag target that's out there. And by practicing at this distances or even this 35, it really helps you see where your errors are because they're gonna be magnified at this distance. If you're off this far at 10 yards, at 20 yards you're off this far, and at 30 yards you're off this far, and it makes a difference. So you start seeing uh, what you need to work on and you start getting a feel for stuff like that. Uh, and it's also good for the concentration aspect. And again, having the obstacles in front of you. Now, if you take all this out of here, it looks different to look at that bag target just sitting there at 30, 32 yards away than it does having all of these things in the middle and having to go over top of this. See, you're up above me right now. When I look at this, that bag target is right above that rail right there for my angle. For you, your, your camera is up higher, but for me, I will actually put you down so you can see it here. We'll take a quick adjustment on here and I will show you. So if I bring this down, maybe I can just do it and keep the angle the same. There's what it looks like at my level. See how the target is just sitting right over that bag there? Um, you can see it back there. I'm not there we go right there. So that's kind of how it looks to me It gives me this little bit of a very uh, Actually, I would probably because I can see the black so we're probably about right there. It's actually how it looks for me um, So by having it this way it gives me this confusing weird angle type thing that I got to mess with and think about so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna shoot a couple to show you. I'm gonna make sure you can see it. I'm gonna put you kind of right over my shoulder. Uh, but you'll notice on these shots with these longer distances, I'm going to uh, take more time. Hang on, we're gonna turn you a touch too. Swing you around just a little bit so it's easier to see. There we go. Um, so you'll, you're will you kind of like almost, you're off a little bit, but over my shoulder, but you'll notice that I'm gonna take more time with this. I'm gonna, uh, again, I wanna focus and I gotta really make sure everything's dialed in right because it is a longer distance, but I'm not, I would never ever shoot at an animal this far. I would never in a million years hunt anything at this distance uh, just from the sheer time it takes an arrow to get there, which you'll see. The lag time, the hang time of that arrow um, 720 grain arrow, 715 to be precise, 715 grain arrow out of a 57 pound bow with my short 25 and a half inch draw length. That takes a long time to get there. Not to mention, as you can see in the trees, I mean, we got a pretty good breeze that's coming across here. Once this arrow gets out here, it's going to fight that wind a little bit too. So you got all these variables on a distant shot like this that are, are can come into play and uh, they're not good for it. So we would never hunt from this distance. This is double the distance I want to be but it is good practice for me and it makes those closer range shots when I'm in there at 12 yards, 15 yards, it makes those feel like a chip shot. That's the goal, that's what we're after. So we take our arrow here, make sure my tip is tight, set, and uh, but like I said, watch the hang time of this arrow and you'll also see, again, my, the time it takes me is a little bit longer. I gotta make sure everything is so precise at this distance is to hit right. And I missed, I'm high, I'm out of that lung by a little bit that high. But you see how long that arrow takes to get there? I mean, it's a tremendous amount of hang time there. We gotta bring that down a little bit. Like that, now that one's perfect. That's a perfect double lung hit. I'll bring, I'll zoom you in and show you. But this is, like I said, a lot more concentrated. You can even, you see me just trying to hold and stay steady and I'm trying to concentrate and trying to just dial everything in before I let it go. low see look at this difference i mean like i said we're 32 yards here it's a long way and that's not a big bag target so we got two good shots and two bad shots out of that is what we ended up with at 32 yards so if i bring you down here a touch we'll zoom you in and show you and spin this so let's zoom that in Gotta zoom in a long way to get there. It's as far actually as we can zoom in. We can see we got two great long shots and uh, you know perfect shots, and then we got one high and one that's a little low. 
that's unacceptable for hunting but for me for a practice purpose and learning how to do this kind of stuff uh, I'll take that because like I said it's teaching me that is the goal it is teaching me what is and is not acceptable and we're gonna go pull them and we will do it one more time and so sorry about that I hit the power button on there by accident as I was adjusting it but let's look here and as we zoom in you can see move you a little bit right there but you can see what we're talking about and uh, so we got, like I said, you know, three good shots and one it's just a little bit back, but it'll work. But uh, very complicated type shooting scenario here and not something we would do from a hunting zone. All right, let me get that reset. All right, let's do one more group here just so it's there for them. Same thing, 32 yards. Let's just run it one more time here for you so you can see. Again, the complication of all this, the hang time, it's just interesting. But like I said, it's incredible practice for when you are close range. Feels like a chip shot when you go from 35 yards and you go down to 18, 15 yards, 10 yards where we like to hunt. God, it's such a chip shot. These help make it that way. Look at that shot. That's, that's perfect. I mean, that's a perfect, perfect double lung shot. I mean, it's exactly where I was aiming. Now that one's in line, but that one's just a little bit low. We're out on that one. And again, the trajectory of this being this far, I mean, if you are off by that far in your sight projection, you're off that far down there. I mean, it's, it's a huge, especially with heavy arrows like I'm shooting. That's why I would never shoot this far. But you can see how just such a minor, or even if I short drew a little bit, or when I released, I creeped a little bit, that will have such an impact down range on where that arrow impacts. I mean, like I said, it is perfectly in line up and down, but we are a solid six inch difference in where we hit that target. One arrow being pure perfection, the other arrow being not good. That one, not bad. Titch back. You actually saw the wind that you, I was telling you about how it's windy through here. You saw that wind kick that one a little bit when it got past the corner. And that one's pretty perfect too. So I actually will walk over there, take a peek at them real fast. And then we're gonna wrap this up basically. So I'm going to drop this right down and get it set like this. Spin you around where I can walk behind you. And like so. And we will take a cruise over there and see them. But yeah, you can see, like I said, this is a, you know, not a big target. And uh, we got some distance covering in here. But it does definitely make your shot options that much more, uh, you know, functional for you. So if we take this here, I set that down. You can see as we look at this, what we're talking about, we have a couple perfect, right there, we got a couple perfect shots. This one acceptable, a little farther over than I want. Actually, here's where I want it to be. You know, so I'm off still even here with these two, but these two are really good in taking it. That one's acceptable. This one is out, okay? That's that one. Like I said, look at the drop distance here. You know, that far a distance, that's tremendous distance we got on here, you know, between there. And uh, that's, that's, that's a bad deal. So it's important that you take the time to practice these, but also understand that when you kick into variables, the hunting variable aspect of all of this, let me reset you here a little bit and bring you up and in and like that but when you take into account all of the variables that can come into this such as animal movement jump in the string duck in the string natural movements that hang time for that arrow to get here there's too much that can go wrong so as a traditional bow hunter i don't think we have any business taking shots at 30 yards that being 32 yards let alone practicing from 35 so i would never do that okay i would never take a shot that far because it's even if you think you're that good i mean we just shot 12 arrows out of there and i only had two that were out out of 12 right i shot three groups of four 12 or uh, so we shot 12 arrows only two of them at 32 yards that were outside on this little bitty target okay it's a little target it's not a big you know little target or, or a big target but when you take that stuff into consideration 
there's too many variables that can go wrong so don't take those kind of shots but that camera is so when i am standing right here and shooting this this is like nothing i feel like my arrow tip is almost going to touch them this is where most of my animals are killed at is right here now with that if all that practice back there it would it's you know oh my gosh i mean you can't it makes it so you can't miss at this and all the jitters that you might get or any of that extra thought process and all these things that you would naturally have to put in back there because you've learned it back there makes it when you get here they are literally chip shots you look at this and you go this is nothing right foom 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 you don't even think about it you're just punching them in there where if you don't practice back there or at those distances these closer in distances are your challenge when you move your challenge further out the closer stuff becomes chip walk or chip shots and cakewalk that's the advantage of it so even though we would never hunt that far definitely worth practicing that far that's the tip for you thanks for watching